Today's challenge is to replace the Bank One uh, Sensor 2 oxygen sensor on the 2010 Honda Odyssey. The issue with it is it's throwing a, a P141 uh, O2 sensor heater circuit uh, error, which leads me to believe it is the sensor itself as the um, it's specific to the heater. So you can see it's got a, uh, a current and if I push the down button, a pending error, uh, which of course translates to a check engine light on the dash. I can reset the uh, the error code and it comes back immediately on restart, which would again indicate a problem with the sensor that doesn't have to do with it uh, taking a while to smell the exhaust or something like that. It's a um, probably a heater circuit, so I just got a new um, new sensor to install. Next step, car in park, emergency brake on hard. Next floor jack, lift the vehicle off the ground, and then jack stands under the, the lifting points. Uh, you don't want to skip this step, folks. It's important. Okay, this series of uh, engines, the 3.5 liter V6 Hondas, have uh, generally four O2 sensors, and the front ones, uh, you can see the, the top ones, these are the pre-cat or upstream sensors uh there, here's the here's that one on the bank two which is in front of the engine the front of the car rather the uh, bank one is on the back where it's harder to get to and harder to see and the the second one the downstream which is one we're replacing on the back cylinders um is the downstream sensor that sniffs the output of the catalytic converter to ensure it's working properly that's all it does. It doesn't affect anything else. So if your car is not running right, don't look at the downstream. But the upstream uh, O2 sensors will certainly have an effect on that and your, your fuel economy as well. Okay, there is the sensor in question. It's uh, toward the back uh, of the car. This is looking out the front. Uh, here's the downstream sensor for the front bank, uh, which goes up to a plug that's fairly accessible. Uh, this one uh, is kind of in between a few things, making it a little bit tricky to get to. And you can see that the plug itself, uh, hopefully you can see, is up there. It's the gray one, kind of in the center of the picture, um, which is not going to be real easy to reach. It's probably best done uh, from the top, I'm not sure. I'll cross that bridge when I come to it, but worst case, I'll trick trip the clip with a, a long screwdriver from here and uh, wiggle it out okay the new sensor comes complete with uh, all the little clips and mounting points uh, to replace the ones in the car now uh, it's a good idea to take a look at how they're clipped in uh, you can see that there uh, if I can get it focused right that there's a little little clip little ratcheting clip on both sides uh, so to get it loose you could uh, uh, probably just pry the old one out uh, destructively without really hurting anything. That's probably the quick way to do it, but otherwise you would probably insert a screwdriver against each of these tabs, push, wiggle it out, probably one side at a time. Uh, since we're replacing it, we don't care. We'll just tear the old one out. And happily, the uh, the new sensor does come with the uh, anti-seize, special high-temperature anti-seize already applied to the threads. Uh, which will make your life a lot easier if you ever do have to get this back out in the future. And very often you can uh, you can remove and install one of these with nothing more than a 7 8 inch or metric equivalent wrench, um, depending on access. Uh, but in this case, you're definitely going to need a socket, and because of the uh, because of the, the cable, you need a special O2 sensor socket. You can find them everywhere on all the regular suspects. Uh, but basically, this just allows it to slide over the cable and then down onto the threads of the uh, sensor so you can install it and remove it. Uh, helpful hint, if you've got one that's really, really stuck and you're going to need a high torque impact socket, uh, just cut the cable off and use a regular socket as long as it's deep enough to clear the housing and uh, take it out that way. But of course you've committed at that point and there's no going back. 
Okay, uh, you'll have to put together a combination that works uh, to give you access and to be able to swing this. I had a little longer half inch extension, but it was uh, it brought the ratchet back in contact with the uh, transmission housing and cross member here. So I ended up with a three inch, uh, three eighths inch extension, which my my uh, socket is a three eighths inch drive, and I'm using a half inch ratchet with a um, with a half, with an adapter to three eighths, uh, just because it'll give me more torque and uh, gives me that little extra extension, which gives me more clearance back here. So. Uh, just use whatever you got that works and uh, twist hard and hopefully it'll come loose. Okay, strangely enough, it came loose very easily. Uh, I do live in the desert. This is a desert car, so uh, it has less rust than a lot of cars do. Uh, so that was a piece of cake. Now it's just a matter of getting the little clips uh, disconnected. And I can see the uh, the clip itself, the, the, the plug is already off the um, keeper up there so it's floating loose although it will not focus um, now I just have to figure out how to get that uh, that released maybe I'll, maybe I can pull it out from the top I'll go try that as with most things on this car it's probably going to be easier uh, if you get rid of the engine cover uh, which is just a big piece of plastic and it comes off that easy um, that gives you much better access to the uh, all the fiddly bits. So now I just got to find out if I can get to that uh, cable from on top and pull it up, or it'd be easier to reconnect the new sensor. Okay, well this could be a whole lot worse. Uh, it may be just a little bit hard to see, but this is the uh, this is the connector. So basically, getting the old one out is really pretty much a piece of cake. Okay, easy peasy. Just push down on this here and pull the connector apart and you've got it. Okay, then it's just a matter of reconnecting the uh, reconnecting the new plug, uh, making sure you get it lined up properly. Okay, when pushing it together, be sure and push down on the little release here when you slide the two bits together. Um, and it'll just slide home. Just make sure it's fully seated. You do not want a gap right here, or you could have problems or intermittent problems in the future. So now the trick is just put the uh, put the sensor back down the way it came out, and it should be hanging right down where you'll be able to install it from below. Okay, here's the here's the clip in question, and uh, it's not real accessible from any other direction. the The actual clips are there and there. I see once you push them both in, uh, it just pops right out. So um, there should be multiples, and I see there's another one up there. I don't think I can really get to it. This this is the second. Uh, stress relief uh, right up uh, gosh right up there off the end of the screwdriver uh, I will not be able to film that and taking that out I'm gonna try to do that now to see if I can uh, get two of these in place because that would be pretty cool uh, there's another one above it uh, that one may be more difficult I think I'll probably leave that one loose okay pushing and pulling on it a little bit I just smacked it with a screwdriver uh, it just fell apart the things uh, at this point 12 years old uh, brittle so it should pop out so that leaves me two uh, unimpeded mounts for the stress reliefs which should be as easy as just clipping into place um, and they should just go right in either way there's one and I'll never be able to get that one in one-handed holding this so you'll just have to trust that I did it Okay, easy peasy. Uh, the second one is in. It's, uh, you just, in this case, I had to actually slide it up the cable a little bit. It was in a little bit of the wrong position. Uh, but you have to put it in by feel, uh, because with your big fat hands in there, there's no way you're going to see it. So just know which way it goes in. 
uh, which is that way, and make sure you have the little square insert pointing the same direction and feel around for it, put it in place. Uh, last challenge will be to get that the actual plug itself onto the little slot uh, that holds it in place. I'm not sure that's entirely necessary, but uh, there's a little metal tab that sticks down and there's a corresponding uh, hole in the um, in the sensor which uh, allows you to allows it to basically stay in place so it doesn't rattle around loose um, that again is going to be a reach up and go by field thing and it may be easier from on top and FYI uh, there's the uh, little tab that's the 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 metal tab goes in here, so you're pushing the plug up onto a flat metal tab. And it's even got a little uh, connector here, a little release that I don't even remember having to push to get it out, but maybe I did. Um, but this will just slide up onto the tab and click into place if all goes well. Okay, you can see the metal tab, or the, uh, the slot for the tab here closest to me. Um, the tab is right... Oh. <laughs> Let's just say it's invisible. Um, basically, I'm going to have to just reach around and fiddle and find it from up here, but I think that's going to be easier from underneath. It's kind of behind, uh, kind of a 45 degree angle from this fat corrugated tube right here. So it's back where my middle finger uh, is right now, if that makes any sense. So uh, it should be able to uh, plug in without too much issue. Uh, the the one thing I do see is going to be a problem is that the cable, and Honda's famous for this, uh, it's kind of tight. Uh, it's going to be hard to get the slack I need to slide it into place, so I'm going to have to push the cable down pretty hard to do that. So I'm going to do that off camera because I do need two hands. Okay, slid right into place. So now uh, we're pretty much ready to uh, check and see if the uh, error code is going. Okay, next step is to uh, erase the codes. Um, it's going to say, are you sure? And I'm going to say, yes, I am. And the ignition is on. Uh, the engine's not running. Uh, I press the OK key. It's processing. And it's been cleared. So now, previously, uh, you can see there's no check engine light. I'm going to start this up. And previously, the check engine light would pop up immediately. Uh, after just literally a couple seconds of, of engine operation, which I took to mean uh, that it was sensing that the heater circuit was bad. Um, so now, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to do a read the code, select the uh, no fault code. See? See how that works? All right. So we are good to go. The one thing I will mention is that the IM readiness... Um, which are the readiness indicators that if your state checks for emissions, um, it will uh, it will reset your readiness indicators so that you're going to need to drive around a while before it will pass emissions. So in this case, um, the uh, let's see, there's a couple uh, incomplete. You can see the incomplete ones, uh, the catalytic monitor. The evaporative system monitor, the oxygen sensor monitor, the EGR VVT system monitor are all incomplete. Um, now that doesn't surprise me because that's just typically what happens when you do a OBD error code reset. Um, but not to worry, driving around a couple days normally should clear it up. And as I said, no, uh, there are no engine check engine lights, so we're good to go. And while you're at it, spend a little time cleaning up the engine cover. This is my buddy's car, and uh, that looked horrible. And I should have mentioned when I pulled this off, uh, the rear, the clips that hold on the back were both broken, which is very common on these because it's they're, people don't know how to release them, so they get broken off. So that's why it only took the front two uh, connectors, the, the, the quarter turn uh, connectors, to get it off. So we're buttoned up, ready to go. Uh, a few miles from now, we'll be ready for emissions.